What's up, Bug Dog with DNA in the Garage? We are here with, believe it or not, this is the anti seize Tecumseh. The nine horsepower that somebody tried to unseize by cramming it full of molybdenum disulfide. Believe it or not, this is what she looks like all done. Today, we're going to dig through this carburetor, get her all cleaned out. We're going to go through this carb and tune it, both uh, an initial tune and then get the engine up to temp and tune it that way. We're also going to put on all the finishing pieces here. We got primer bulbs and filler necks, getting this thing all ready for its eventual, <laughs> eventual, eventual use as a repower powerhead for a a uh, very large log splitter out there. That'll be another video itself. Tune in with me, friends. Let's get this thing running 10 out of 10. Last video on the Annie Seas Tecumseh. Here she is. Alrighty, friends. We got our carburetor off. We've assembled all sorts of mean, nasty, ugly things, implements of destruction, and the like. We'll start by blasting off a little bit of the outside. Now we're also going to have to figure out an uh, air filter. So obviously this thing's definitely going to need an air filter. Some of you are probably wondering why I'm not going ultrasonic on this thing. I want to do it a little quicker than that. And it's not all gummed up on the inside, so I don't think it really needs it, honestly. That is going to be clean enough for our purposes. Blast off the choke. Choke. Blast off the... Um, sound it out. My goodness, idle screw, holy Halliburton. My brain just absolutely screeched to a halt. Take your best, think there's gonna be another pile of that uh, Colombian Bang Bang in there? Can we remove this bowl gasket? Ooh, we got her off. That's a good one right there. You don't see that every day. So here's what you do to bring these guys back around. Because this one is dry but not yet cracked. This works 80% of the time, it works every time. I kind of like fluid film for this. Got a little metal container here. I think this had glue in it at work. And I kept it for this exact purpose. Put your thing down in there and just coat it up. I'm running out of fluid film, but I'm just going to let it eat in there. Let it sit in that fluid film, and it's going to kind of eke into the rubber and reanimate that gasket for you. It's good enough. It's good enough for the, uh, the motors we go out with anyway. This car bowl is pretty good. Clean off the outside for good measure. Pull our adjustment screw out of our main jet. Looks darn good though, doesn't it? Oop, that little. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna need any more than that. Spring is still springing, our threads look good. That's that sorted. Let's put him in. Oop. Almost lost our copper water, sure. Put this guy in all the way. And then back out two. Half, one, and a half, two. Alrighty then, let's get this little bracket off. And honestly, we don't have to put this bracket back on. It was for the uh, the cover the snow blowers have. I'll put this in the parts bin. Let's see, where was our idle screw? Half, one, one out. I'm just gonna take our idle screw all the way out just so we can kind of clean a little bit behind it, in front of it, on it. Tell you what else, I'm probably gonna leave this bracket off the front so that it'll be easier to put an air filter on. And we'll just, uh, again, that cover's not on, so we don't need to be able to use the choke knob like that. We can just do it up here, you know what I mean? I 
think that's what we're gonna do. Cause like I said, we still have to figure out an air filter for this thing. Snow blowers don't have one because they don't run, they run in a dust free environment. It's the same reason your outboard doesn't have one. There's no dust floating on top of the water. That's not the case when you're running a log splitter. It's pretty much all dust. Okay, there we go. That's, we may bring this back, but we also probably won't. It'd be a heck of a lot easier to bolt something right to the face there. Now I didn't really want to do this, but I think we're going to take the uh, intake elbow off as well. Because this one, I mean, is going to be harder than Chinese algebra. Because I guarantee it's never been taken off since it was put on in 1995 or whenever. My goodness. Uh, it probably, you know what, it broke in a way that would probably reseal if I'm being completely honest with the guy, but yeah, it's all right, we'll figure it out. I really got to get some of them. I, I told you, I, I edited last night the footage up until this point. I realized a couple things. I forgot to put in the footage where I put in the oil. So for any of you that were wondering, is there any oil in that thing? Yeah, there's oil in it. <laughs> uh... And there's something else I forget to film, but I forget what at this point. This little copper washer probably goes on here. Let's not lose that. Uh, but I mentioned the Rolock green bristle brushes. My buddy at work uses those for pulling old gaskets off. And man, do they work 10 out of 10. I might have to get me one of those, especially now that I have a big enough compressor to run my little uh, right angle die grinder tool. I uh, probably should have checked to make sure that I have that gasket before cutting this one off, but worst case, we will glue it on. I'm not above that. We've done it before, we'll do it again. Alrighty. Now that we got some other stuff out of the way, maybe we can get some more of the grime off of here. Oh yeah, we gotta figure out that governor setup at some point. Hopefully, God will, and quick, quick Google search should do her. Oh, wait a minute. I have another one of these sitting out back. I'll just go look at that one. Boy, that makes it easy, don't it? Alrighty, now I don't love pulling the emulsion tube out unless you have to, and I don't think we have to on this one. Uh, I'm definitely gonna blast some stuff right down. I'll tell you why I don't think so. It was running off idle. It was on idle that it had trouble with. So I have every reason to believe main circuit's fine. Alrighty, friends, should we blow our seat across the garage? There it goes. Did you see it? Oh, she gone. No idea where. Um, but you know, that one was actually sealing, so I really didn't have to do that, I guess, but whatever. We'll put a new seat in for good measure. Blow some stuff through there Jeez, crackers that went right in the old eyes goodness that hurt uh, I feel like I should have seen that come in or I don't know Gah, Christmas that was stupid life is hard and harder when you're stupid I am just that's honestly what I should rename our channel because I think I'm just out to prove that on a weekly basis Christmas that sucked Okay, clean off that choke blade. Gotta say, inside she's pretty clean. That's why I'm not going too crazy on her. Let's fire some down this idle circuit. Make sure that's cleared out. Make sure you can see it coming out the bottom, which we do. Almost ejected that little rubber gasket. We'll put that over here. Got a couple little holes right down the throat hole there. There, you want to make sure you get some cleaner in there. Not tea bag. Not tea bag at all. Now, you'll notice right under this welch plug, there's a little hole in the side. You want to make sure you get through there as well. We already blew through the one way, now we'll blow back the other way. 
and you want to make sure it's coming out of your fit. I think you saw it. Maybe not. Who knows? That's what you want. And then the uh, vent to atmosphere hole that's right here. We actually just saw it moving stuff, but we'll fill this up again to illustrate. You want to make sure you got something air brake clean coming out of that little hole right there as well. Ready? Three, two, one, go. I don't know if y'all can see, but I could. I poof. I tell you what, I think this carb is gooder than good. She's gooder than good, bud. See what we got. First thing, second, idle screw, rubber seat, copper washer, spring screw. Half, one and a quarter, cause it wasn't running right. Idle screw. We're actually gonna put a little bit of anti seize on that. <laughs> Ironic given the motor, I know, but we're just going to use an appropriate amount in a place that makes sense. How about that? And he sees because this thing's going to sit outside and those those screws do seize up. And I'm probably going to crank her all the way in just to get it started. And then we'll argue with it from there. Float. Can shake it. Don't hear any water or anything. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. We actually adjusted it yesterday, so needle. Oh, I didn't put a seat in. That would have stunk. That would have really stunk. There we go. One seat. And I have that little tool for putting them in somewhere, but I can never find it when I need it. I can only trip over it. You know, that little crochet hook thing. I thought I had it out yesterday, but... She done R-U-N-N-O-F-T. The long and the short of it is, it's pretty hard to mess up putting a seat in. Put the groove side down. Get it in your hole there. Get any kind of ramrod you can find. Some people like to use a drill bit. There's a broken screw. It's about the right size. See so it seated like that. Groove down and just push it down. There's nothing to it. Money. Oh, actually, this drill bit would have been perfect. What size drill bit is that? It's a cheap one where they don't tell you. Oh, well. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Und now. We put the float and needle in. And as you can all see, that is pretty well adjusted. Actually, it could go up a little bit more, but uh, whatever. Let's see, it should be sealed. It is, it should be open. It is, it should be sealed. Still is, beautiful thing, beautiful thing, beautiful thing. Let's put this guy on. The low side goes over the pin. Oh, Christmas. Left and right, I'm forgetting stuff today. Let's go back over to our gasket that's been cooking in fluid film. Fluid film may be, for all I know, it's like the worst you could use for this, but I don't know, it always works for me. Leave a little bit on there. See, it's going to kind of bring back that pliability some. And then make sure you put it back in the same orientation. They get a little bit of a bevel to them. Put them back with the bevel in the same way. Work this guy on carefully. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this fluid film. And I'm actually going to rub it right on the rim of this here to help it seal. And a good idea is when you lightly put it on, if you can't spin it, the rubber's probably grabbing it enough to seal. If you put it on and it just very lightly will spin around, eh, you're probably no good. Do I have any more of these fiber gaskets? Fiber washers. No, shoot. I had a whole mess of them. I guess I ran through them. Yeah, nothing but empty bags. Time to restock. It's almost snar blower season. So we're going to be reusing that one. We'll probably do a little bit of the same on this. I'm really not worried about this fluid film getting inside the carburetor. It's not going to do anything. All right, do we have a carburetor gasket? Hey, 
hey, Mazo! You'll love to see it. I don't know, I almost want to put some some RTV on there, but I guess I won't. I guess I won't. Alrighty, much better. Put that there. Put that there. Slide that back a bit. Alrighty, what do you guys want to do for an air filter? Let me see what I have in stock. Yeah, I don't think we need to mess with the whole weird choke lever thing. We'll just do that. Right? I think that works. Alrighty, friends, I have a box here of some random snowblower parts. I think we're going to want one fuel filter and one primer bulb. Why not? And then additionally, I've got some filters here. And I want to see if maybe we can make something like this work. I have an idea. I don't know if it's gonna work yet. Actually, this one would probably be better. I'm gonna use that one. Alrighty, friends, this is that choke piece that goes on the front here. I just took out the actual lever, and I'm wondering if I can't jam this over this filter here for the purpose of creating my own little air filter situation. So let's pull off this hose clamp, or loosen it, I guess. Oh, look at that. Will that go all the way in? That'd be incredible if it would. I wonder, I think I have to trim the top of this off. But then it should fit all the way down. I mean, it may not be perfect, but it'll be a heck of a lot better than nothing, right? Ah, uh, that is pretty awesome. The only problem is it messes with our choke lever. But it does seal all the way around, I think, right? Friends, I think for right now, that's absolutely going to be good enough. It goes over the nuts. There's a little bit of a hole right there. I might try to figure out something for holding it on, but that's, I mean, 10 out of 10. I'm going to have to cut this choke lever off, but that doesn't bother me. We'll just twist it along the top there. I think we're going to run it like that. I gotta figure out this governor real quick. Alrighty friends, the beauty of having a junkyard in your backyard. I got some great pictures of where the governor rods go. Additionally, I found this off a donor engine so we can actually check the, the oil level and keep the elements in the water out of it. I think it's gonna fit, we'll put that on later. Let's try for our governor linkage right now. There we go. I just gotta get this governor back arm back on in the same place. It was like that. We can adjust that governor later with a tachometer to make sure it's in the right spot. But for now, that should get us about where we're headed. Should we built this carb up for the 90th time or throttle's working at least. Here's to bait. This yellow fill cap belongs over here, I think, hypothetically, potentially. I feel like I'm cross threading it, but nope. Okay. And this sassy SOB goes down yonder like that. And makes a bunch of contact with our gas tank that's not really for this unit. Perfect. And there you have it. Friends, we have just really done a number on this engine. I am now going to figure out how to bolt this thing down so we can give her a proper test, tune that carbon, call this one sorted. 
Oh boy, friends, jumped the gun once again. Forgot we wanted to put a primer bulb on this guy. Let's find something to lubricate it with just a little bit. Anything will do, since I have fluid film out. Put just a little bit on that barb there. Yeah, this line's too small, but we're gonna make it work anyway. Good enough for who it's for. I really don't want to take this cowl off for a 90th time. Oh, I see it. I see it in there. Hey, look at that. Come on, little guy. Happy to see you. Go under this linkage, down and around to here. Oof, that's going to be a tight fit getting that on there. But let's see. Should we heat it up some? It's either gonna make it easier or harder. Easier. And then when it cools, that'll be sealed on there for good. And then all we do is plug this guy in there. Mint. Uh, fuel filter, and then we're done. I think. Slam one of these guys in. I'm actually not gonna clip it. If it leaks, I will. But usually these barbed ones don't leak. Let's see. Fuel on. Now, so far, so good. Is fuel flowing to the carburetor? Sure is. Get our very janky air filter on. Well, you know what, if I put it on kind of like that, this is not gonna be our permanent air filter. What I've wanted to do for a while, actually, if any of you 3D print. So, so many people use these snowblower engines as, um, whatchamacallit, engines, uh, like dirt bikes or re repurpose them. Somebody needs to 3D print something that'll bolt onto here comes straight out, has a little lip on it so that you can use filters like this. If any of you 3D print, hit me up, D and E offroad at gmail.com. If you can build me some of these, uh, let's do some business because I think we can sell these too. Um, but even if not, I want about 10 of them for the machines I have that are currently running snowblower engines, but I'm doing some janky crap like this or I'm making a thing out of an old cookie tin. I don't know. I've done all kinds of stuff to try to put filters on these. The real answer is, um, have somebody 3D print something. So anyway, without further ado. All righty, friends, we've got everything connected. We've gone somewhat down the road of securing this thing to a bench. Thank you uh, to granddad's clamps. Nothing you get at the usual scumbags these days is uh, up to, what are these things? I've been using these things for years. Grandpa left them to me. These are Wetzler Clamp Co. 212s, LLC, New York. You know, that's some made in America stuff. I mean, I use these things for everything. He, grand, Grandpa used them as uh, for wood. I use these to compress my calipers. Uh, anytime I need to put something someplace and I know it's gotta not go anywhere, I reach for the old Wetzlers. My vice, my, uh, what are those? Those Irwin ones that are decent, but whatever. you get it. Let's turn the fuel on. It's on. Let's pump it up. Oh, it's pumping. You can see it dripping out the carb there. Uh, that's really all there is to it. Let's choke on, throttle up, see what we can do.
I immediately, I must not have tightened down one of these bolts. Let's find where that guy weeble wobble to so we don't lose our fuel tank. But hey, hey, talk about a result right away, right off the hop. She kicked. Not that there was any reason for her not to. Uh, not even that much room for adjustment, though we are going to do some. Where'd that bolt go? Shucks. Oh, right here. I gotta tell y'all, I got into antique adjustables a while ago, just as a collectible, and then recently I started using them. Oh man, we knew how to make an adjustable back in the day. Today, like an adjustable is like a tool you use when you're too dumb to use the right tool. It wasn't the case back in the day. Old granddad's granddad knew what was up. I got this Smith & Co. one right here. It's a little worse for the wear, by no means a collector's item, but uh, just a treat to work with. Actually, it's broken in the back there. That's why I got her so cheap, but she's got a lot of life left in her. The HD Smith & Co. Patented October 1900. <whistles> the perfect handle is what they're claiming. Yeah, it's a pretty good handle, bud. <whistles> okay. Is everything toit? Should we try that again? Do I have a screwdriver? No. Uh, this should be the kill wire that I forgot to hook up to the coil, so that's not going to do anything. Oh well. Uh, let's try no choke this time since it did so well last time. Let's see if she'll start on idle, no choke. Alrighty friends, what we want to do now, we've got that pretty well dialed in. I'm going to let this run for a good 10, 20 minutes and um, let it get up to temperature and then we'll set that carb again. Uh, you really shouldn't set it, you know, two seconds after the first start in 10 years, right? So let's let this thing run up to temperature, burn off any uh, stuff that it needs to burn off and then we will uh, get a final tune in and then this perfectly Brought back from the dead power head for use in that fancy fornicator right there. I'm so excited. I can't wait. She idles just a treat. I mean, that's 10 out of 10.
All right, friends, I'm pretty happy with that. We're gonna have to do some more work once we get it connected up to that pump. But uh, for where we're at right now, not too bad. Considering a couple days ago, this thing was in pieces, didn't have a gas tank, didn't have a filler neck, didn't have a carburetor, didn't have a muffler, didn't have a primer bulb, didn't have a chance in, snowball's chance in hell. That's what we do here on this channel. That's the whole point here. Let's save some rusty, dusty crap. We live in a disposable society and I'm not okay with that, dang it. I think we can do better. We did better today. That's 10 out of 10. Um, if you like the video, like the video. I'm gonna do another video on getting it onto the actual machine there because I'm not really sure what I wanna use to mate this to the uh, hydraulic pump because it doesn't really have the right size shaft. But we've come this far, so we'll surmount that issue as well. But we can put the nine horsepower, the Annie C's 318, because fun fact, a nine horsepower Tecumseh is 318 cc. One of my favorite numbers in the world. 318, we got the Annie C's 318 running. She's 10 out of 10. They said it couldn't be done. And yet, here we are. It's a running motor. You love to see it. How much fuel do we use? Very, very little. Um... Yeah, let me know what y'all think. Are you picking up rusty, dusty crud on the side of the road, or is it just me? Anyway, as always, love to hear that comment down in the squad boxes. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Oh my goodness, friends. I was standing down here doing the, uh, the post-edit intro and outro after I decided to split this video up, and I forgot. We put a brand new primer bulb on and the fancy filler neck. Forgot us a little, one of those little throttle triangles. Let's see, I'll bet you we got, I'll bet you we got. Uh, and don't for a second think this is my only hoard of snowblower parts. This is just one box, whatever. It doesn't matter. Here we, uh, let's choke. Here we go, brandy new ones out of those carb replacement kits. Let's see if she fits. Oh goodness, yeah. That'll work, well. Perfect. That is a level of class that you just can't buy. You gotta find it on the side of the road.